Okay, so today I'm going to make some oat cakes. First of all, just going to take me a couple of minutes and while I get uh, all the prep done, which will only take a moment, I'm just going to put the oven on. So that's going to get up to temperature. Then it's really simple. All we do is take, and this is my taste, we mix up, um, I know this says uh, one minute oats, but it's actually got the old fashioned ones in there. And this is a bag of the one minute oats. And we like to blend them because the, the old fashioned oats are quite large. So they tend to uh, make uh, really chunky uh, oat cakes. Whereas these ones are, are cut finer and uh, we, we like the mix of the two. So all we have, three ingredients, oat, meal, water and salt. So it's not anything terribly scientific about this. We just put a certain amount in the, it's all based on the tray size. And I like to make up two trays at a time to put in, uh, in the oven. So we're just gonna put a little bit of oatmeal on top. An amount of salt. One pint of water. One sixteen ounce pint of water. Then just give it a mix. Pretty simple. Just mix it all up. Get it going. Take a spatula just to make sure I can get the jug, the jug emptied, and I'll just leave that there for a minute, and then I'll make the, the next one. About half a jug. About half, yeah. About fifty-fifty. And a bit more in there. So it brings up to about three quarters of a pound. Something like that. But it, yes, that's right. But it's all down to the tray size. And the key here is to get the oat cakes thin. Make them thin. Now, we like to put pepper with one tray. So one tray is plain, and the other ones are going to have a little bit of pepper. So I'm going to add some chili flakes. I just forgot to get those out. So this is, this is to personal taste, of course, uh, and these are just regular uh, crushed chili flakes. And again, to taste, you can put in as much or as little of you like, as you like. There's lots of things you can put into the, uh, into the oat cakes. I didn't put any salt in there, I don't think, so I'll just put that in there. And then just give it a whisk round. Now you can also put seeds in these as well, because that makes a nice uh, variation. So you can use things like uh, pumpkin seeds, sunflower seeds, that sort of thing. So it's as simple as you like. Just put it in the jug, mix it up. You have to mix it in the jug. You can't mix it when it's on the tray. That won't work. And then Get it all out. Just so, so simple. And to think, you know, that we used to buy these before when we were first in the US, we used to buy mm. Nan's oat cakes, wasn't it? And we would live and die by those things. And now, uh, I don't think we would we would give them house room. The key here is getting it all even and flat. It is. It is. And you'll Thin. see we just kind of get that nicely. Nicely put down. You can give it a bit of a jostle around as well in the tray just to kind of get the water evenly. Uh, spread sort of like that it just helps a little bit I find 
and once we've got it spread, it's not an exact science, we just want to get them even and, and relatively thin. So, That's that, the so that they cook evenly and part of it doesn't burn and is cooked evenly all through. That's right, you just want to cook them. So you spend, you spend actually longer patting it down and getting it even than actually making it up. Of course. Okay. And these are the plain ones, as you can see. So, same mix, just no pepper. And why do we do that? Well, some, some um, oat cakes with the pepper or seeds are nice with, you know, at different times of the day, um, with, a, with, a, with some cheese, with a glass of wine. Um, we, can, we have them in the bre uh, over breakfast sometimes. I personally like them uh, instead of toast or bread. And... Um, it's a good healthy option. There's no sugar, there's no yeast, there's no flour. So anybody who has um, intolerances to those things, then that's good. Again, just try and get it nicely patted down, evened out. And while all this is happening, the oven is getting up to temperature. So when, uh, when we put them in, you'll see I've just patted them, got them even, but I haven't done anything else yet. There's not a whole lot more to do other than make sure they're up to temperature, make sure they're nice and even, and Pop them in the oven. Pop them in the oven, no, taking note of the time. So what we're going to do in about 30 minutes is we're going to take them out and cut them into really even shapes so that they are easier to eat and share and put into containers. So that's it. So we've got them, it's almost up to temperature. Not quite, it should cook at 163, which I think is 300. 25 if I'm not mistaken Fahrenheit, uh, it's 163 Celsius is what we, we cook at. It's almost up to temperature so not quite and uh, we'll just set a timer for 30 minutes and then we'll come back and uh, cut the oat cakes uh, using the easiest thing is a good old fashioned pizza cutter. Okay. Okay, so half an hour later, we're just going to take the oat cakes out and give them a cut. That's second round. So, they're not quite as soft as they were and they're easier to cut now. That's the one with pepper, as you can see, the peppery flakes, and those are the plain ones. So, all we do, and it's just, to, just to make it easier for eating and storing and, and sharing. Again, nothing terribly scientific about any of this. It's just to help the process. And any of you who have made flapjacks before will know all about this. So we like to see that make them into relatively small pieces. And again, you know, no, no points or prizes for being too accurate or too precise. It's just about you don't really want to, we used to make them without cutting them in the early days. And that's fine, there's nothing wrong with it, but they do tend to be very irregular shapes and you get a lot of, you get a lot of um, dust, you know, and, uh, and such like in the bottom of the, of the container, which you get less of when you um, cut them like this. So that's a, it's a good thing to be able to do. Now, when these are in the oven, I didn't mention it, but I, I use the convection oven rather than baking oven, so like a fan oven, if you like. And the reason for that is they cook much more evenly, and that's really important. You don't want them to get cooked or burnt on one side and not cooked uh, somewhere else on the tray. You want them to cook evenly. So we put them on at the top, even though it's a fan oven, it doesn't really matter. They could go on that tray. Uh, and, and that's them there, and we'll come back in about probably about 45 minutes time.
and take them out. But they've got to be very firm. Sometimes we leave them in a bit longer so that they're really not soggy and very, very crispy. But we turn the oven off and then just leave them in there. That's right. Okay. Okay, so we've given the oat cakes about another hour, actually, because I had a look at them and they needed just a bit more time. So this is after about an hour uh, since we cut them and they're loose in the tray. So I can take them out and see what we have here. And there we are, nice and loose in the tray. So they're, they're all fully cooked and you can see the value of having pre-cut them, can't you? Because they're, they're already gonna fall into pieces. Now they're, they're far too hot to touch. So all I'm gonna do is just leave them to cool. And, um, and then when they are cool and, and, ready, and cool to touch, then they can be put into containers. And you can see they're nice and thin, maybe somewhat thinner at the corners, but no, it's not a problem. It's not an exact science. These are the spicy ones you can sell by the pepper. And these are the plain ones. And you can see that mix of the uh, coarse oats, the old, what they call the old fashioned oatmeal, and the, uh, and the finer oats in the, uh, that we mixed them with. So it, we think that this is a nicer texture and uh, they're nice and satisfyingly crunchy to the taste. Um, they're not too salty, but I wouldn't recommend trying to cook them without any salt because it does just add that little that little piece to the flavor so these are brilliant with hummus with cheese with eggs um, you can have them more or less anyway and more or less at any time of the day and if you're not um, someone that can eat bread uh, gluten intolerant perhaps then these are a, a good option there as well so thank you very much for watching this video and uh, I shall sign off any comments, please post them uh, in the comment section below.